Love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tim Pelez. I'm the senior program coordinator for the graduate school here at UTSA. Um, this program is the result of a partnership between the graduate school and College of Liberal and Fine Arts. Over the winter break, grad the graduate school and the College of Liberal and Fine Arts sent four students to the Podcasting for the Humanities Institute put on by the National Center, or nope, National Humanities Center at San Diego State University, uh, with the condition of sending them there and providing funding for that being that those students then take what they learn, bring it back here to UTSA, and present it to the larger UTSA community. And that is how the, um, today's program came about. And so with that being said, the program you're gonna to see today is put together by those four students. They'll be providing you all the information and presenting. They're the subject matter experts when it comes to this. And so with that, I will be handing it over to those students. Um, we're gonna walk you through what they learned um, during that podcasting institute. Good afternoon. I hope all is well. I'm Richard, and we are presenting Public Facing Research Podcasting for the Humanities. During the winter break, we attended the NHC Podcasting Institute hosted by San Diego Digital Humanities Center. The team members are me, Nilu, and Avery. We will be covering storyboarding, recording, and editing. Remember that it is important to rehearse with your team before you record so, so that the editing process is easier. I recently started listening to podcasts more often. I, I like listening to Russell Brand because of his um, sobriety. And I'm interested in like um, stories that are influential to people. And at the end of the session, I would like you all to share what is your favorite podcast? Communication is the key <clears throat> to identify what the podcast is going to cover. The hardware, software are important for a successful podcast. Audacity is the recording and editing software that we will be using for this session. In the Institute, we were grouped into teams with graduate, gra graduate school strangers, and we collaborated with each other pretty well. Collaboration is important in the podcasting experience. It was interesting because I collabor collaborated with students from different countries, India, South Korea, and Great Britain. I was fortunate to experience a great team, and we created a 25-minute podcast on the subject of the other in literature. We were students from around the world, yet had something in common regarding the other. I go pass it on to Neil. Hi, everyone. I'm Neil, and I'm going to talk about planning your podcast and storyboarding. So um, there are some uh, certain key things to identify early in the process. Um, you have to decide why you want to create a podcast and for whom you are creating this podcast. So you have to determine your intended and unintended audiences. Uh, you should also decide what the podcast will be about and how you will get this done. So you have to consider your time and also your labor. And believe me, this will take more time and labor than you think. And you should also uh, uh, consider where this uh, post podcast will fit your uh, scholarly identity. Um, so there are um, some planning techniques for creating a good uh, podcast episode. And one of them is studying. So uh, it's a good idea to explore other shows and their episodes and try to outline a successful podcast episode, uh, as well as the shortcomings of an unsuccessful podcast episode. Uh, another technique is organizing. So it's important to identify different elements of your episode, like music, audio clips, narration, and interviews. Make sure to time yourself and then start to organize and outline 
your podcast. Um, there are some uh, things to consider in this stage. You have to uh, be careful about the interplay of elements and you have to find balance between different elements. Timing and transitions are very important, shifts and tone and mood. And also you have to enhance the central po point or argument and make sure to follow the thread, which means that you have to stick to the same direction. And um, so now I wanna talk about storyboarding. It is a great approach for planning your podcast and it helps you figure out uh, different segments of your episode and to determine narrative art, pacing, and mood. It can also help you to figure out what kinds of background music or sound effects you might want to use. Now I wanna uh, go through different elements of storyboarding um, briefly. So uh, the first segment of storyboarding is uh, intro music. Um, so uh, every podcast episode should have a high quality introduction. And if, you, and if you're creating a video podcast, you have to make sure that uh, your episode has a nice video title and uh, it should be produced to introduce the show. The next segment uh, is a host show introduction. So in this stage, um, the host welcomes listeners and viewers to the program. And in this segment, it is also the time to introduce um, the cast of the show. Next segment uh, is news. So in this part of uh, the host can talk about um, this week's news, for example, or personal news. And there are some good questions to answer. At this stage, like what has each cast member been up to? What has happened since the last show? Or what can we expect to talk about in this episode? Um, next segment is about the sponsor of the show. So the host and cast members talk about the sponsor, but you have to make sure that it's not too long because we don't want uh, our episode to be boring. Um, next segment uh, would be guest interview. So in this part, um, there's going to be a dialogue between the interviewer and the guest, and it should start by introducing the guest, um, their background, their accomplishments, and then they move um, to the topic of the interview itself. Um, next part uh, could be about the audience questions. So um, the host, the cast, and the guests should respond to the questions from audience members. And these questions can be from emails or any other uh, platforms that are created for the questions. Next part uh, is the guest exit part. So um, the host can tell the audience where they can go on the show to find out more about the guests and their product or services. And if the interview was good, the host can ask uh, the audience to send in questions for a possible follow-up episode. And next part, um, you can talk about uh, the upcoming events uh, and products. And the last part is gonna be about the reminders. So the host reminds guests of where the podcast website is located, where they can find all the links, and uh, they can also ask people to rate, review, and comment. And it's uh, the place where uh, the last sponsor message could be delivered. And um, we have to use a good outro music, uh, just like the intro for closing the episode. Um, so um, it's important to know that after you are done with planning and production of your episode, you have to plan for publication. It's important to know that podcasts run off of uh, RSS feeds and um, the feed pushes episodes to subscribers via podcast services and apps um, like um, um, Apple Podcasts or CastBox. And uh, you can do it yourself or use a hosting service. Uh, if you're using a hosting service, 
Um, the good thing about it is that they simplify the process for you by handling their RSS feed. And uh, there are two types of hosting services like paid, like Spotify and free services like Podbase. But if you try to do it yourself, you need to create your own website and add RSS feed to it. And you have to ensure that all the metadata is properly tagged and validated. And uh, another uh, thing um, that uh, you have to be careful is that you have to plan for the accessibility of your show. Um, so in order to make it more accessible, you are encouraged to create a transcript and there are several tools that you can use like other AI. You can also use YouTube, uh, but it requires a video component. But the good news is that it can be a static image. And if you're um, doing a Zoom recording, uh, you can enable a live transcription. And so uh, another uh, thing uh, about uh, transcripts is that if you're using AI-based tools, uh, you have to go uh, through um, the transcript and, uh, invest, uh, and uh, look for uh, probable mistakes and try to manually edit them. And another uh, important component of a good podcast episode is having cover art, which helps you uh, promote your episode. And uh, there are some certain tools that you can use. There could be free or paid tools, free templates. Um, you can find free templates on um, Canva, Canva. And... Uh, the last thing that you have to do for planning the promotion of your episode is creating a trailer uh, for um, your show. Um, so um, there are also some platforms that help you create a uh, trailer like uh, Wave or Headliner. So that's all that I have to say about uh, planning and storyboarding. And I turn it over to Kaylee. All right. Thank you, Nilu. Um, now we can get started recording your ideas. So for the best sound quality, you may consider using an external microphone like a Yeti or a Rode. Um, in a pinch, your cell phone microphone or um, the microphone that comes on wired headphones may work. But our goal here is to make ourselves sound as great as possible to meet, reach as many people as possible. Um, in addition to your microphone, you'll need some kind of editing software. Uh, there's Audacity, which we'll be talking about today, is a free software, or you can use something like Adobe Audition, which you can get through UTSA's Adobe Suite. And most computers also have a good OS built-in compatible tool, um, like for Macs, it's GarageBand. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use a good podcasting mic. Um, during the podcasting seminar, we all used a Blue Yeti. Um, it's a good option for a high quality microphone because it starts at around $80. Um, so today I'll give a quick rundown about the Blue Yeti, uh, but this is gonna be applicable to most of the podcasting microphones on the market today. So a podcasting microphone typically sits on a heavy stand with knobs for mic tilt. On the front, there is a mute button and a corresponding light, which is solid red when recording, blinking red when muted. Um, so right now mine is solid red and if I click my mute, and if I re-click it back on, um, I'm back in. So also on the front is a volume adjustment, which controls how loud the playback is through your headphones. And then on the back is the gain knob, which adjusts the mic's sensitivity to sound. Um, so we'll talk about this a little bit later, but if I turn mine up, my voice gets louder and the background noise also gets louder. I'm not sure how this translates directly through Zoom, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn mine back down to a place that sounds good in my headphones. Um, there's also a mic pattern knob, which determines from which direction the microphone is picking up sound. So there are four pattern modes on something like a Blue Yeti. Um, depending on the room that you're in, you'd want to plug in your headphones and your microphone and test which mode works best for you. Uh, typically for solo recording sessions, you'd use the cardioid mode, um, which is what I'm in now. That's that little heart setting. Um, this records sound sources that are directly in front of your microphone. 
Uh, but if you were recording with others um, in a room, but you only had one mic, you might use something like the omnidirectional mode, which will pick up sound equally from all around the microphone. All right, now that we understand our mic a little bit, we can set up our studio. So you wanna create a good recording space first and foremost. Um, you want this recording space to have dampened sound. I'm in my office right now and it's not the greatest example. I've got a refrigerator running, I've got AC, um, but we'll talk about how to create like the perfect studio instead. So you can create sound dampening with things like clothing, jackets, blankets, um, cloth that all can cut down on echo. Recording in a small enclosed space will also help with this. Um, during the Podcasting Institute, they told us that it would be perfectly fine if we recorded in a closet, and many people did. Um, lots of people had a nice little DIY studio um, where they felt they sounded their best. For these types of microphones, you'd want to use your windscreen, which is sort of this fuzzy thing I have on the top here. Um, and this can help eliminate pops on T's, P's, and K's. You're still going to get pops on T's, P's, and K's, especially if you speak like me. It's it's inevitable. Um, and it's important to position yourself and your microphone so that you're in a natural position. You want to make sure that the microphone meets your face closely, but it's not touching it. And microphones like the Yeti are side addressed microphones. So you want to speak next to it and not above it or into the top, in other words. And lastly, be careful and aware when you're recording. Try not to fidget or tap on surfaces because mics will pick up everything from typing to wrestling papers to adjusting clothing. You guys may have heard like as I skip to the next slide, you can hear that on my keyboard. So keep that in mind um, while you're recording, especially if the microphone is sitting on the same table as the sound is occurring. All right, now to actually record. So for Mac users, make sure to plug in your external microphone before opening your audio slash editing software. This is just a quirk of Macs um, and something that can cause a lot of frustration when you keep failing to find your nice microphone that is plugged in. Um, so keep that in mind if you're confused as to why it's not popping up. But here let's use Audacity as our sort of recording software. Um, just as an example, which Avery will talk to you more in depth about in just a minute. But things to keep in mind when you're going to record, make sure that your input and output devices are correct um, for your corresponding microphone. Adjust your mic settings, including position, gain, posture. Um, for gain, I talked a little bit about this um, before, but this is how loud you'll sound on your microphone and how much sound your mic is going to absorb. So if your gain is too high, you'll hear loud and distorted audio. You'll hear things like the AC. You'll hear your dogs in the next room, et cetera. Um, if you turn your gain to zero, you won't hear anything. So if you're in a perfectly quiet space, you have a little room to play with the gain. Um, but we're never really in a perfectly quiet space. <laughs> so to be on the safe side, you want your gain pretty low to cut down on outside noise without making without it making your voice too soft. Um, and as I said about like clothing and blankets and stuff like that, you'll want to find the happy medium in your specific setup. So it takes a lot of plugging your mic in, fiddling with things, hearing yourself um, in your headphones. Another important thing is to start your recording um, with three to five seconds of silence. This comes in handy later for filtering out ambient noise and editing. And your pause and your mute buttons will be great allies if you have things like sneezes, coughs, barking dogs. Um, you can always edit these out later, but it's it's nice to be able to control when your microphone is picking up any sound and to tell it to pick up absolutely zero sound. All right, finally, we can record. So as I said, Avery's gonna go a little bit more into depth about this, but when you're using something like Audacity, you wanna make sure that your recording device is set to your mic that your playback device is also set to your microphone if you're using headphones um, plugged into your mic. And then for the recording channels, you wanna choose stereo. Um, this means that you'll be recording on two separate audio channels and the audio will be heard for the listeners in both the left and the right headphones. Um, from here, you click record. It's important to every time do a test before your real recording to make sure that your inputs and outputs are properly configured your sound levels look good, um, your files will be saved after finishing to a location that you can find. 
Um, and then you'll want to play back your test to make sure that everything sounds good. So when you look at your sound levels in your audio recording software, um, you don't want it to be too consistently loud or too consistently soft. Too loud, like the first example on the top here, will result in um, cutting audio and a little bit of annoyance for your headphone users. Um, and too soft is hard to fix in post-processing. Uh, and then all of your ideas will not be heard. So you want a sound wave that looks something like the example on the bottom of the screen here. There's good levels, good consistent gain. It's not too loud, not too quiet, and not too varied. And once your test looks good, you can go ahead and record your podcast. You want to try to main maintain your recording position um, and a stable uh, volume throughout, and then you should be good to go. Um, I want to quickly bring up something here that maybe we can come back to in the Q&A um, and something that Nilo touched on as well. But when you're recording your podcast, you want to keep track of the planning that we just talked about. For example, are you recording a pretty formal podcast about your work? Is it scripted? Are you going to go back and re-record sentences that you messed up on? Or is it pretty casual? So you really, what I'm getting at here is you want to keep in mind the vibe that you're aiming for. Um, it can be helpful when getting started to think about how the podcasts you like, how they're recorded. Um, I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts, and those are definitely very casual. Um, but then I also listen to things like short stories from Duolingo, where they're pretty formal. Um, so if you're aiming for something like that or something like NPR with formal discussion of important topics, it may be beneficial to record a few takes for important sentences. Um, if you do mess up on a sentence and want to do it again, uh, something that can be very helpful in editing is give yourself a second or two between the end of a bad sentence and the beginning of a new sentence. Um, your future self in editing will definitely thank you for the space to be able to cut around mistakes. Uh, if you're aiming, conversely, if you're aiming for something more conversational and easygoing, you may consider pushing through mistakes and or making light of them. And keep in mind that it's tough to recreate the exact environment that you recorded your audio in um, and keep things consistent. So if you think that you want it in your podcast, it's best to record it right then and there. Uh, you can always edit things out. It's tougher to add things in later and recreate your exact audio environment, your exact background noise, um, even your exact tone of voice on that day. And then when you're done recording, um, you should save the recording into a project workspace for future editing. So you can you can record, Avery will go into this, but you can save that directly in your audio um, editing software. But you also want to export the audio as a standalone raw file as a backup. <laughs> this can be helpful for future editing, future mixing, things like that. Um, .wav or a WAV file is going to be the default for things like Audacity, but you can also opt to work in something that might be more familiar to you guys, which is MP3. Uh, and lastly, make sure to specify the des desired file directory on your computer so that we can complete the next step, which is editing. Um, and Avery just popped in from work, so we might give her a, a second or two to, to dial in, but we're going to go straight into editing with Avery here. Wow, that was really good timing. <laughs> Thank you for making do without me. Sorry, I was late. Um, hi, I'm Avery. I am going to be covering a bit of a live demo for the Audacity section um, for how to do the podcast. And I'm not sure how much was already mentioned, so please forgive me if there's a little bit of repeat around um, some of this information. Um, we do also have a fantastic handout for you that I will drop the link to in the chat. Um, and it has a ton of different resources for you guys. Um, like um, I'm sure has been mentioned, this was a one week institute for us. So we learned a lot of information, a lot of material. Um, and this is a 45 minute, one hour workshop. So this is going to be a very abridged version of editing. Um, I'm going to be in, um, this is very basic editing also, as you can see on the slide. Um, I'm going to be editing in the current version of Audacity. If you have downloaded it before and you have an older version, um, things might look a little different and things might change in the future. Um, so if they update something, some of the stuff on the worksheet, some of the tutorials, they might get a little outdated. 
But the good thing is that if you are able to just go on Google and or and or YouTube um, and just search Audacity tutorial and then whatever you're trying to do, there's a thousand different tutorials out there that are up to date um, and that will probably be regularly updated as things change. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if I can. Yeah optimize for video. Okay, so this is what your Audacity looks like when you open things up. We have our toolbars up here. We have our time signatures down here and then the big gray box. Um, you can, if you need to, you can go into view, you can go into toolbars and you can adjust what you can see and what you can't. That'll be kind of a personal preference and dependent on what you're trying to do. Um, I frankly do not know what a lot of these tool toolbars are. Um, I'm still a beginner as well. Um, and I hope that this tutorial will show you that you can be a beginner and still do quite a bit within Audacity without um, much of a learning curve. I had never done any audio editing before. I had never used Audacity before our, our um, one week workshop. And um, now I can at least run this basic live demo. So um, definitely don't be too intimidated. It's, it's not as hard as it might seem at, at the start. So the very first thing you wanna do is go into file and save your project. Um, this saves this screen, um, basically just your workspace. This does not save the actual like final product or whatever you end up creating. And it'll tell you that this is not for an audio file. This is for your project itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna call this live demo one. And that way, if this crashes, if something goes wrong, um, then I can just reopen this and it'll bring me back to my workspace. So what I'm gonna do here is just briefly run you through kind of like a very, very mini abridged silly podcast um, that we're gonna create together. Well, you're gonna watch me create it <laughs> together in spirit. So the very first thing you wanna do is just start recording. So I just have the record button here. Um, I guess one thing you might want to check, you can go into audio setup and check your playback device. So make sure that it has your microphone selected and it's not your computer speakers or something else. Um, check that for recording device as well. Sometimes it'll automatically choose your computer speakers. So you do want to check and make sure that that's all lined up and that is the way you want it. Um, and if you have, I believe, a Mac, you will want to have your headphones plugged in before you even open Audacity, where it will not recognize them. Headphones, sorry, your speak, your microphone. Still getting up to speed from work. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just record like a quick intro, and then we'll talk about what you see. So um, as I'm sure Kaylee has mentioned, if you are going to be recording for a podcast, you want to be in a recording space. I'm currently not in a recording space. I am just in my home office space and it has three windows that face the street. So there is quite a bit of background noise, especially right now we have um, rush hour traffic going on. Um, so there's going to be some audio interference in my recording. Um, the best way to avoid this is again, to have a blanket fort, a bathroom or closet or something that's going to muffle the sound and keep things really quiet for you. I also have a dog who's going to be drinking water behind me and has little tippy tappy toes. So just ignore the uh, background noise for right now. Um, and we'll go over some ways that you can also fix some of that um, through editing. So we're going to go lay down so I can record. <laughs> She's a great office assistant until you're trying to be quiet. All right. Welcome to the podcast live demo. Today's host, Avi Bloors, will read you a short poem. All right. So my audio is a little bit loud. I did not have a chance to adjust my gain or my volume or anything like that. Um, and there is a little bit of background noise. As Kaylee mentioned, I'm sure when you start recording what you want to do is give it a couple seconds um, 
of just silence and that'll help it select. It'll help you later select the stuff you want to edit out. I didn't really do that just now, um, but it's still usable. So first I'll show you kind of what you're looking at here. We have our stereo recording. So we have two recording tracks on top of each other. We have, this is considered an audio clip. I can select it, I can drag it. That'll come into play later. And we have what's called a track. This whole thing, this whole light gray section here is a track. Typically, if you are going to be doing a podcast with like multiple people speaking or multiple different sources of sound, you want to name your tracks. So we'll name this one narrator or host, actually. We'll do host. Okay. And then this audio clip, we also want to name that. So sorry, I should be telling you how to do this. <laughs> so for naming a track, you click the, the drop down button up here and you can just click name pretty simple. For audio clips, you double click up here and then you can name it. So this is going to be our introduction. Okay. So now we have that named. We can give it a quick listen. So this is your L bar here, this little thing. You can move that around. You can select different parts of the clip. To start playing your clip, you can just push the space bar. Welcome to the podcast live demo. Today's host, Avi Lures, will read you a short poem. All right, so that, <laughs> again, a little bit loud. It picked up some of my breathing, um, not ideal. So one thing that we can do is we can select this quiet part of the clip. We can go to effects, and then we can go to noise removal and repair. And then we can go to noise reduction. I'm not gonna change any of these, but you will need, before you can click okay, you have to get a noise profile. So you're gonna click that, select the part of the clip. I did it a little early the first time. All right, select whatever part of the clip you want. You can even select the whole clip. All right, and then go back, noise removal and repair, noise reduction. And now I can click okay. All right, I did that wrong. See, guys, I'm still a beginner. I need to click the whole thing. <laughs> I can just do repeat noise reduction because now it already has it on file. All right. You'll see that these um, the waveform here went a little bit smaller. Um, it did reduce the noise. It wouldn't have reduced. It wouldn't have removed my breathing, <laughs> but it will have redu reduced the noise. And one thing you'll notice, I can do this. I'll, I'll show you a comparison later. Um, but one thing you can do is you play it. Welcome to the podcast live demo. But in these quiet parts, you'll notice it's a, it's a lot quieter. It's a little hard to show this over Zoom. I think the comparison will help. All right. So we have our introduction. That's great. That's not all we want. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read a poem. And I'm not actually going to read it. I think I just remember it by heart. Um, yep. All right. So once again, we can just hit record. Figs and Thistles, First Fig by Edna St. Vincent Millay. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But oh, my foes and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. All right, so we got our poem. That's going to be the quote unquote meat of this little mini podcast. Once again, I'm going to select the audio clip and I'm going to rename the clip. It may seem silly to be naming these clips, but in reality, when you are editing an hour long something or other, um, you end up with a lot of different clips, particularly if you're cutting out certain sections, if you're moving certain sections around. Um, if you want, like if somebody laughs at the wrong time and you want to kind of edge it over so it, it lines up with a joke better or something like that, you end up with a lot of these clips. Some are tiny, some are longer, and it's very, very helpful to know what each clip is. So we have our introduction and we have our poem. And here I'm going to show you a little bit of the difference between when you do noise reduction and when you don't. So if you can listen here. There's almost nothing. You can hear me breathe a little bit, but almost nothing there. 
And then here, you can hear all of that background noise. So it does really make a difference. It especially makes a difference later when you add in something that was professionally recorded like audio, um, or sorry, audio, like music. Um, and it would make a big difference because you can hear the clip come in with that background noise if you haven't reduced it. So once again, I'm gonna click the whole clip. And since I already have it, I can just push repeat noise production. And once again, that's going to slightly reduce everything. All right. So we have our introduction. We have our poem. Now we might want to have a little something else. So if you're going to introduce a new speaker, a new line, you can add a new track. So we're going to go up here to tracks. I'm just going to do add new. And we want stereo track. That's going to sound better. It has sound coming to both ears, essentially. And it'll just stack them right on top. It makes them pretty big by default. One thing you can do if you're like me and you like to be able to see everything on your screen, you can hover over here and you'll see your cursor becomes a little arrow and you can drag it up and have everything kind of fit a little bit nicer on your screen and you can see everything. So one thing we can do here, we're gonna add this, we're gonna add music. So, um, Kaylee might have mentioned this, but there are a million different sources for free music online that you can download. Um, sometimes you have to make a membership, sometimes you don't. Um, you could also make your own music. That's absolutely encouraged. We love that, obviously. Um, or if you have friends that make music, you can ask to use theirs. One thing you don't want to do, and this is obvious, I think, for most of us, um, is use music that is copyrighted or um owned by someone else. There is um, a lot that goes into the free use policy or fair use policy. Um, honestly, I don't know. I'm not an expert on that. I'm not an expert on copyright laws. Um, I'm sure you could probably use like one second of something or two seconds, um, but it's worth doing the research if you really need to. Um, but in our handout that we're going to provide to you guys, there's a lot of different sources for both music and uh, sound effects as well that you can do quite a bit with um, without having to worry about any of that. So one of those things that I did um, was, we're gonna go to file, import and audio. And I already downloaded some audio. This is um, a Rachmaninoff piano prelude because we're being fancy with our poem. Um, this was done by a man named Gregor Quendel and it was provided on freemusic.com and I just downloaded it and that was easy and it's there. You click open and it's, oops, it made a track for us. And I'll just delete that one and we'll rename this one. All right, so it adds it in for you. It also gives it a name. It just goes with the file name. This is a bit long for me. I don't need to know all of that. So I'm just gonna write music. Computer is being a little bit slow. There we go. All right, so let's give that. One thing you'll notice, it's stacked on top of our speaking audio, all right? So if we play it, welcome to the podcast live demo. Today's host, Avery Lures, will read you a short poem. So it does play them both at the same time. You may not want that. I think it sounds fine, honestly. Um, but you might want to adjust that depending on your podcast, your intro, whatever you're trying to do. And again, you can just drag. You could also edit it. So one of the things that I haven't shown you yet, and we'll go up here to show you. Um, I'm gonna zoom in so you can just, I'm just taking my two fingers on my trackpad and dragging them sep like out from each other like this, making a peace sign. Um, again, that's pretty standard if you're used to touch screens or trackpads, but that'll zoom you in and you can see the finer parts of the waveform. So for our poem, this is all extra. I don't really need all of this. If you see this, that's just if you ignore the music. So actually, if we don't want the music to play, we can just hit mute right here. We don't need any of that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right about where I want the actual audio to start. And then you can right click and you can do split clip. And you'll see there's also a keyboard shortcut, control I. So I'm going to click split clip. And now it has split it into two different audio clips. Then you can select that and delete. Just push the delete button on your keyboard. Another way you can do it, and I'm just going to show you again down here, you can select the part you don't want. Maybe right about there. Do your control I, split clip, and then you can just hit delete. So that's a, the keyboard shortcut really comes in handy. Again, the editing takes forever. I cannot emphasize how much time the editing of a one hour podcast can take, especially if you're a beginner. And these things like shortcuts, these keyboard shortcuts will really, really help you out. Okay. So now figs and thistles, first fig by Edna St. Vincent Millay. So you hear there's a little thump there. I bumped the microphone. So I might want to take that out as well. So this is, again, this is kind of up to you, how you want um, your podcast to sound, what you want to include, how maybe polished or unpolished you want. That can be a stylistic thing. Um, but if you have little moments like that um, where you bump your microphone or if you say, um, or if you cough or, you know, even if you're recording, um, in a conversation with people and maybe somebody says, or you talk over each other on accident or somebody says something that they're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that on recording. It does happen. <laughs> um, then you want to, you, you can stop talking all of you for a minute, get a little bit of silence and then just start over again. And then you can edit that out in post. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking out all the little moments um, that I don't want included. All right. So now we've got our poem edited, we have our music, we have our introduction. You can see down here is a um, scroll bar. I can move us all the way back over here. So personally for me, I like the music to kind of introduce the moment. So most podcasts will start with a little bit of theme music or some sort of like nice light intro or heavy intro, depending on the podcast. All right. I'm going to check what this sound is. All right, that's just my breathing again. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, so I'm selecting, control I, select again, delete. All right, so I moved the introduction. You'll see on the music that there is this kind of louder bit. And then there's a bit of a kind of a consistently quiet or flatter piece. And that's where I'm going to kind of fit my introduction. It's just lucky that it kind of fits right in there. Okay. And then I'm going to look over here and there's once again, a nice, I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see all at once. Okay. So you can see again, there's a nice poem sized section right about there that I am going to just line up with the poem. Okay. And actually, I think I can scoot that over. You can also rejoin clips, I believe, if you select two at the same time, maybe. I'm not sure. That might be a look that up. Um, yeah, so there is a join clips option. You'd have to select them both. And then I think you can do control J. I'm not going to bother right now because um, in the interest of time, um, we're just going to keep them separate. All right. So now we have, we got our nice classy intro to our short poem. Welcome to the podcast live demo. Today's host, Avi Lures, will read you a short poem. Then we have another little musical interlude, which is a little bit long. I would, stylistically speaking, probably add something else in here maybe an introduction to the poem or talking about what the poem is or why I found it. Full disclosure, I found this poem on the internet. I just searched short poems. <laughs> so now we're gonna get to where our music gets a little bit louder. This green bar is showing you exactly where along the music, along the audio track you are. If you wanna pause, you just push the space button 
You want to keep playing, push it again. You also have your controls up here. Figs and Thistles, First Fig, by Edna St. Vincent Millay. My candle burned. Ooh, so that was one thing. That was an awkward grouping. So we might actually want a bit of a pause between those two audio clips. So I'm going to move this one over. We'll see how that sounds. Figs and Thistles, First Fig, by Edna St. Vincent Millay. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But oh, my foes, and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. All right, so pretty good. Um, this recording, again, a little bit too loud. When I said, oh, you could hear a little bit of the distortion. One thing I could do is I could try to select that section and try to do another noise reduction. I could try to do a volume reduction. There's a lot of different things um, that you can do here. I'm not gonna go too far into it because again, um, our handout has quite a bit of this. You could also, if you have time, just delete and re-record. So it's always worth doing a couple little tests um, before you start recording and before you really get into your recording. I know that in my group and my cohort, when we were creating our podcast, it seemed great, everything was fine. Um, and then about halfway through, I didn't even notice, but the windscreen on my microphone fell off. <laughs> um, and I didn't notice. So the second half of our podcast, my audio was a little bit louder than it should have been. And I had to go in and fix all of that. So things do happen. And a lot of that will come as you practice more. And as you get used to recording, um, it's just the way it goes. So then we have the end bit here. Say I want to add a, I don't know, an outro, some sort of final thing. And actually one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new track. So we'll pretend that this is a new person speaking. And it's going to go down underneath the music. If you don't want it down by the music, you can also, oops, that collapses it. You can move it up. So you can move track to top. You can just move it up one. And now my music is on the bottom again. And I can have the second audio here. And again, it does this thing where it's very wide um, and I like to be able to see all my tracks on the screen at once. So I'm going to resize that a little bit. All right. So now we've got a good little space for an outro. I'm going to try and just turn my gain down a tiny bit on the back side here. So um, as you can probably hear the difference. As Kaylee told you, working with your microphone levels is always a good idea before you start recording. All right. So this is, it might sound weird because it's going to sound slightly different level than the, the ones on the top. Oops. So you'll notice what I forgot to do there is to mute the audio track below it. All right. This has been a live podcast demo with your host, Avery Lures. Join us next week when she reads a new poem, Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. I like to put on my best NPR voice for these podcasts. I don't know. You guys will find your podcast persona. So we'll just give this outro. We can do this, I don't know, pretend second host. Okay. And now we've got that. So let's give that a quick listen without music. This has been a live podcast demo with your host, Avery Lures. Join us next week when she reads a new poem, Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. So that one, the audio levels are way better. It's a lot quieter. It's not quite as jarring, but <laughs> there's a lot of bird noise in the background. Personally, I love a good bird, but it doesn't quite work with the vibe of this podcast. So once again, we're going to try and do some noise reduction. Hopefully that takes out some of that. Oh yeah. Okay. And then again, we don't really need this section. So we can go ahead and edit that out. Can edit out this last bit. 
Good. Okay. And then one thing I didn't show you guys is when you have a lot of these tracks, it can get visually a little bit confusing. One of the things that I ended up doing when I was editing my team's podcast is I changed the color. So if you want to do that, you can go to the name, you can go to this drop down menu, you can change the wave color. And that changed this one to red. We'll unmute this guy so we can see it again. And then we can do green. So that way it visually separates things a little bit more and you can kind of see what's happening a little bit clearer. Um, red and green may not be the best choice if you are colorblind, um, but they do have a couple of different options. Um, and it just, I, I like it. I think it visually helps organize things a little bit better. So now we've got our outro. Another thing you can do, this audio or this music track doesn't really need it. Um, but one thing you can do is you can go to effect and you can add fade. So it'll fade in, it can fade out. Um, it comes with predetermined settings that you can change if you want to. You'll see it makes it quite a bit quieter. Um, so very quiet in the beginning and it'll start to get louder up here. So that's a very slow fade in. I don't really like that. Um, if you do something you don't really like, you can just go to edit and undo. It's also the same shortcut that you could do in, uh, say, Microsoft Word. That's a very common shortcut for undo is control Z. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. Keep our music loud. So now we have just about a nice little pretend podcast here. So let's give that one full listen through. Welcome to the podcast live demo. Today's host, Avery Lures, will read you a short poem. I'm sorry, this is a, I'm just going to skip this because it's a very long musical interlude. Again, in, oops, that's a good thing I can show you actually. So you'll see what I just did. I always do this because I'm used to being able to click and drag the playing bar, which you cannot do. I believe that's a garage band thing. If any of you ever played in garage band back in the day. Um, but, but one thing you can do here, if you're really working on a specific kind of clip or you're just trying to hear and rehear the same section, you can select it um, and it'll start, it'll do a repeat. It's what's called a loop. So it'll go back. If you do that on accident, um, you can just, oops, I have to stop playing, stop playing. You can do this and you can do, you right click it and you hit clear loop. All right, so we'll go down here. Figs and Thistles, First Fig, by Edna St. Vincent Millay. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But oh, my foes, and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Then we have, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Our nice swell of music here. You can also see up at the top here, I know my Zoom toolbar is, is in the way, so I'm going to drop this down a little bit. You can see your this noise been levels. a live podcast demo with your host, Avery Lures. Join us next week when she reads a new poem, Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. All right, so you can see up here my noise levels um, were a little bit loud. Um, a lot of that was coming in from work and I didn't have time to adjust things. So do check your noise levels when you are recording things. I am recording directly here in Audacity. As you see, there are lots of different ways to record. That's also covered on the handout. You can record in Zoom. You can record with WhatsApp. You can record out in the field. Um, there's lots of different ways. And then you can import that audio file into Audacity just for editing. This was a little bit of both. So I'm gonna go ahead and then save that. So we'll call this finished 
it definitely needs some work. Kaylee, I see your hand is raised. Um, give me one second here. So we're going to do save project one more time. And then when you're totally done, we can export audio. So that will give you this. You can give it a, it's a wave file by automatic, but you can change that um, depending on what you're looking for. Give it a good name. So this is still live demo. We'll just keep that. And then it'll export your audio file. Oops. So we got to make sure that we're in the right place. So we'll go into Podcast Institute and Workshop Demo, and there we go. So there we go. All right, let me check our chat here. All right, sorry, I did go a little bit long. So I'm going to stop sharing. We have Q&A time if you guys need.